Hello everyone, Emily from the Pencil Room Online here. I've got a slightly different format video for you today. I'm going to take you through how to apply one point perspective to observational drawing. So if you haven't already checked out the first video on one point perspective and what it is and how it works, then I suggest you go and check that out. There's an exercise there that you can do to become familiar with drawing in one point perspective. But what I really want to show you is how you then take that information and apply it to something you might be drawing in real life. So it could be that you're outside sketching and uh, you're in a perfect situation to apply one point perspective or you could be working from a photograph. How do you incorporate what you now know about one point perspective, vanishing points and uh, converging lines? The subjects that one point perspective can be applied to are really quite specific. So you can't use this for just anything. You might be able to combine it in some drawings, use it for parts of a drawing. But generally speaking, it needs to be in an instance where you are looking down something that vanishes into the distance. So maybe a long road or a river or railway tracks, or it could be the side of a building that you're looking at vanishing into the distance. So that's one instance. Uh, it can also be used for drawing buildings, but when you're drawing buildings, they need to be a cube or a rectangular cube shape, and you need to be facing one of the, the surfaces or one of the planes of that cube. If you're facing the corner, it's not going to work. And that's two-point perspective. It can also be applied to drawing the inside of a, of a, of a building, like the interior and maybe a room and you're looking at a back wall and then you have the two side walls uh, coming towards you. So just keep in mind that there are some really particular criteria that your subject matter needs to have if you're wanting to apply the principles of one point perspective. This is the photograph that we're going to be using and um, it's, it's quite hard to find a simple photograph for one point perspective. Technically, if we look at this photograph, there's a little bit of two-point perspective going on if we look inside the building, but we're really just going to look at the structure of this building and um, think about how to find the vanishing point, because that's what you're going to be doing if you're drawing from a, from a photograph or drawing from real life. So the way we do that is we look for the converging lines, and the most obvious ones are this one here. following the, the bottom edge of that building and um, the side of that path and then the other side of the path here. And where those cross is going to tell us where um, our vanishing point is. And what we should find if we're in the right situation is that any other guidelines will meet at that vanishing point. So if we look at the top of this opening here, um, into the building and we line those two posts up you can see that they also line up with the vanishing point we've also got on this side here it's a little bit hard to see but there's a bit of a um, an outcrop here and if we if we line that up we'll draw a line let's go from the vanishing point downwards it's a little bit easier you can see that that also follows the edge of that outcrop and um, if you have a look further at that you can see that there's um, the front of the outcrop here that is going to be a horizontal line so if you remember from um, the first video anything that is a width is going to be horizontal anything that is a height like these lines here these are always going to be vertical there's only one plane or one um, of a cube anyway there's only one plane that's going to be you know, heading back towards that vanishing point. So we need to remember that when we start drawing this. We're going to keep it really simple, not going to worry about the, you know, the surface details, the graffiti or the the, the um, old bits of, I don't know what they are. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to be thinking about how to use that vanishing point. And the other thing we can think about is our horizon line. And in this instance, it does actually meet with the vanishing point. Sometimes I call it a an eye level because you know there might be something in front of the horizon line and you can't actually see it but this line here where the vanishing point is where all those converging lines meet 
that is an actual horizon line and it's also our eye level so that's that's where we're looking at that line is um, in line with our eye height so let's move to our sketchbook and we'll have a go at drawing this you need a pencil I'm using my mechanical pencil here just because nice and sharp but just an HB pencil will be fine and an eraser if you want to you could use a ruler but I think it's nice to have a go at doing this without a ruler because you know if you're outside and you're sketching you're not going to be using a ruler and also sometimes using a ruler means that um, things look a little bit kind of uh, robotic I guess and it's nice to have something that looks like a, a natural kind of a sketch so the first thing we, we're doing is figuring out where that vanishing point is. We know it's on the horizon line, so let's go ahead and draw our horizon line first. And if you have a look at the photograph, it is about halfway up the image. It's where that horizon line is. We can look at where it meets the edge of the photograph here. And so we know that it's you know, halfway up that photograph. You can see mine's not straight. It's a little bit wonky that's okay and then we're going to pick where our vanishing point is going to go now if you don't get it in the right place it's okay it just means you're going to have a slightly different perspective but if we think about where the middle of this photograph is and then where we found our vanishing point which was about here it's um maybe how would we describe that we divide our page in half and then divide this half into thirds we get where our vanishing point is one two three so we've got one two three and our vanishing point is right on this third here so i'm going to pop that in there and all of these lines here you want to keep nice and light these converging lines that we're about to do I'm going to make mine dark enough that you can see them, but keep yours as light as you can. So we've got our horizon line, got our vanishing point, and then we're going to start adding in our converging lines, which are going to be the guides to show us where these different parts of the building and the path go. And we can just use our eye and think about the angle. So if we're looking for this line here of the bottom of the building we could look at you know, this angle in here look at this triangle shape think about um, what kind of shape that is and then try to get the same kind of shape in our drawing like I said if it's a little bit out it doesn't matter too much and then we're going to draw the other side of the path over here so this line here look at that triangle shape it's a different angle to the first angle that we drew so a little bit greater so it might be something like that then we're going to look for the edge that's going to be the top of the building what line does that follow it's going to meet the vanishing point look at the angle is it greater or smaller than this angle here so just I'd say it's just a little bit greater if you were outside and you were drawing then you could be you know holding your your pencil up like this and measuring the angles that way if you're working from a photograph you could be doing the same thing you know lying your pencil on the photograph and lining it up with the angles to try and gauge what kind of angle that is before you go ahead and draw it And then let's put in the angle for this little outcropping. It's quite hard to see that one. There it is there. So it's very close to the vanishing point. So it's a very narrow angle. Something like that. Now we've got all these guidelines, we can start to put in the, the vertical parts of the structure and those are always going to be vertical so 
Um, it's, it's probably the easiest part to do, really. We've just got to figure out whereabouts they occur. So if we think about where the back of the building is, it's very close to the vanishing point. We can draw a straight line there. And we think about, we can't see the front of the building, but we can see this opening here. So if we could see the front of the building, um, it would be like a square, like that. But we're not far enough back to see the front of the building. So let's decide where this opening is going to go. And if we're looking at the photograph, it's going to occur about, let's say, halfway between the vanishing point and the edge of the page. See if you agree. So this line here, so halfway between here and the edge of the page, maybe a little bit less than halfway. So uh, I'm going to make this the edge of my page here. Put it about there. Just a guideline, make it really light. And then this other one here is close to the edge of the page. And the top of that opening into the building is going to meet up with our vanishing point. So we need to put a guideline in there to know how high these two sides of the opening are going to come up to. So there it is there, it comes about halfway between the top of the building and our horizon line. Something like that, and that then gives us the top of that opening. And we can join everything up. My, my one here, this doorway here is a little bit narrower I think than it is in the photograph and that's okay. Like I said, if you get the angles slightly different it's still going to work as long as you're making everything meet to that vanishing point. It just might mean that uh, the position of the, the viewer is in a slightly different place. Let's move back over here to this little outcropping. And we're going to put in the horizontal lines for that. I think there is one right at the back there. You can just see it right at the back. And I think it's probably just a little bit further back than the back of the building there. So there's a, a horizontal line there, and then there's going to be another horizontal line. Maybe around about here. And then another horizontal line. And then we've got one vertical line. So hopefully you can see how this is forming the front slab of what would be a kind of a flat rect rectangle cube. And then this here is the, the top surface. So this is the width, this is the depth, and this is the, the height. So once we've put all those guidelines in, the rest of the drawing is just adding in details. So creating a bit of width here for the sides of the, the doorway, the top of the doorway. And this post on the side, the other side of the doorway here. Just get rid of this horizon line. We don't need that over here anymore. And we don't need any of these guidelines. We'll get rid of anything that you don't need. And we could add in a little bit of this landscape. It follows the horizon line. It's just maybe a little bit, a little bit wobbly to make it look natural. It's a little bit of land here. Even this area of debris that comes down here, it it sort of follows the edge of this path, and so the edge of that bunch of debris kind of lines up with the vanishing point as well. We're going to keep it really simple. If you did want to add anything else, it could be looking at the brickwork on the building, and that it also 
it's going to meet our converging line, so it would be another good one to um, to practice with. So every every row of bricks here will meet up with our vanishing point. So you can see down the bottom here, if you look at the photograph, they're angling that way towards the vanishing point. If you look at the top of the photograph, they're angling downwards towards the vanishing point. And that's going to be all the way down. See, they start to slowly move around to line up with the vanishing point. There's one more little doorway at the end there. Let's add that one in as well. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Uh, remember vertical lines for the height. And then it's probably in line with this doorway here. And that's going to line up with the vanishing point as well. And that gives us the top of that second doorway. play around with creating maybe like a, a walkway that has planks on it. You can add in some landscape textures, or some, you know, some trees if you want to. And give these posts a little bit of depth. So these are like long cubes as well. They have a, um, a side and then a front, side and a front. Just put in a few bricks there using the converging lines back to the vanishing point and then adding in some verticals and as these bricks move back as you move back along this wall here the bricks are going to get smaller in height but they're also going to get smaller in width so they should be getting closer and closer together so remember with perspective the way things work with our vision is as things get further away from us they appear smaller and smaller, and the space between them appears smaller and smaller as well. So these ones back here will be really small. You can also just create an idea of the bricks. They don't need to be super accurate, depending on what kind of style you want to draw in. So back here I've just kind of given an idea. I haven't done them in the exact uh, correct pattern. If you wanted to take this drawing further, you could come in with a darker pencil. So this is a 3B pencil and add in some more detail, some darker detail, especially in the foreground here. You don't really want to have really dark details in the background because as things get further away from us, they start to fade and get lighter. But just bringing that darker pencil in can give you a little bit more depth with your details. So I hope you found this short tutorial useful um, to help you understand how to find that vanishing point when you start off with a drawing in one point perspective, especially if you're working from a photograph, looking for where those angles intersect and then using that vanishing point or that intersection point for all of your other converging lines to get an accurate sense of depth and perspective. If you do want to do more one point perspective drawing and, and practice this technique, I will have a couple of tutorials available for purchase shortly on my website. You can check those out. I'll put a link in the description below. One is on drawing a simple landscape using one point perspective, but also um, practicing mark making and how to create different textures for different elements of a landscape. And then the second one is a landscape, but it also has a barn in it as well. So it's got a building 
that we also apply the one-point perspective principles to. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll probably see you again soon for two-point perspective.